Howdy folks, it's General Heed here. How's everyone doing today? So, about like two years ago or so, I showed you guys a video of 12 things you probably never noticed uh, on Halo 3. Well, today I'll be showing you 12 more things that you probably never noticed before. Starting with number one, the Brutes Balancing Carbines. So, on Mission Crow's Nest, after you clear uh, all the Brutes here in the, um, almost all the Brutes here in the Pelican area, uh, these Brutes will come out here from the store, and when they come out, sometimes, it, it happens like once in a while, they will go into like a sort of idle pose and then casually stroll. But when they do that, if they were holding carbines, they balance the carbines on the back of their jetpacks, like on the top of it. And it, it just looks so silly, like the way they are balancing it. But it's a very rare animation that you get to see uh, in Halo 3, because uh, rarely are there jetpack brutes that also use carbines that go into idle poses on any mission. Uh, and like I said, even on this mission, it it rarely ever happens. Um, it, it's because usually when they come out, they usually just charge right at you. Or they stand in like a ready pose. But yeah, so moving right along with number two. Power drains killing ODSTs. So this is a really weird one that I actually, it kind of blew my mind when I first saw it. Like I didn't even, when someone told me about it, like I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, but apparently, ODSTs and Marines have different health systems to the point where if you throw a power drain near them like I'm about to do right now the power drain will actually kill the ODSTs and not affect the Marines before exploding obviously the explosion can hurt Marines but for ODSTs it, it completely drains their health all the way down to zero so <laughs> uh, it has yeah, the power drain has no effect on Marines' health, but on ODSTs, it, it literally sap, <laughs> saps the life out of ODSTs, and within like a second, they're, they're all dead. Whereas with pretty much every other uh, type of AI or creature, it, it really does nothing, no damage, until it explodes. So, it's really weird that it does that. <laughs> now, for number three, Dock Worker helmets in Halo 3 are actually surprisingly pretty uh, safe. So if you shoot a dock worker in the head with a helmet on, the the helmet's actually bulletproof and stops one bullet before it gets knocked off. However, the marine helmets can't even stop a single bullet at all to the head. So yeah, the, these are like... <laughs> the UNSC, they're, they're getting the wrong helmets. They, uh, <laughs> they These marines, they, they gotta return them. They gotta, they gotta use the dock worker helmets instead. Like, <laughs> with the Dock Worker helmets, they can actually take uh, a bulleted head. However, it doesn't protect them against sniper fire. But it does protect them against uh, a burst from a BR, or a Magnum, or a Carbine, any other non-sniper headshot weapon. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird little thing there, too. Now, for number four. Sometimes on uh, certain missions, it, it's, it's really random, but there's a Marine that uh, looks like this who has like super super pale skin especially on OD um on MCC uh, if you shoot his helmet off while he's a dead body when the helmet comes off it turns into a hat and it only happens to this one specific marine there are a lot of other marines with helmets on the ground like dead bodies but if you shoot their helmets off they stay helmets uh, but anyways, it's not just this mission. It, it, this marine can appear on other missions too like here we're on to Sava uh, Sava Highway um, but it, it, this marine doesn't always spawn in these areas. It, like I said, it's random. If you were to play this mission right now and you come here, uh, it you know it may not be the same marine. It's, it's just random. But sometimes when a marine does spawn, it will the uh, helmet when it gets shot off, it will be a hat. Now number five is on a mission high ground, and it's actually out of the map. So if you push a teleporter outside the map, which there are other tutorials out there to do, um, but for the sake of time, I won't be really covering that. But if you go outside the map into the water area on high ground. Um, well, first of all, it's actually pretty realistic underwater here. Um, you know, the sounds muffling and everything, and um, other like visual effects and stuff. But if you come over here and you hug the wall, and then you keep walking all the way outside the map, eventually you will hit the very corner of the map right here, and you can't go any further. So if you stay in this very corner, and well, if somebody stays in that very corner and then looks straight down and tosses a grenade. The grenade will actually like freak out on the ground, and it would be like, um, first of all, it will make like a grinding like sound effect, and it will also kick up a lot of dirt in the air too. 
Except for firebomb grenades. But all the other grenades, it'll just like freak out. It's kind of like on Halo Reach in those uh, pools on uh, New Alexandria where if you throw a grenade, it just freaks out. It's exactly like that, actually. Pretty much the same sound effect, too. All right, so for number six. This one I've actually covered a long time ago in a video, but barely anybody saw it. And I figured it's, uh, it's still a really cool thing. Uh, so I figured I'd show it to you guys again for this video, for those of you who haven't noticed it before. <laughs> but basically, golf balls and soccer balls in Halo 3, they're actually vehicles. So if you like flip one over to the side and then you hold B or whatever button it is to flip vehicles for you, you can actually flip or unflip a uh, soccer ball or golf ball. And yeah, that's a little nifty thing that you can do. Uh, and you know, you don't even have to touch it, you could just... Uh, if it's not right side up, you just hold down your button and then it'll, you know, it'll flip over. There, there won't be like a prompt on the screen to, that says like hold B to flip soccer ball or whatever, but the, the action is still there. You just gotta hold down your button. All right, so for number seven, this is grunts balancing fuel rods. Uh, it's actually a pretty similar thing as the first thing we showed you in this video with the brutes balancing carbines, which is when grunts that are holding fuel rod cannons, when they get on a turret or really any vehicle for that matter, they will balance the fuel rod cannon on the top of their head, like on their back. And again, it just looks like silly <laughs> the way they balance it. They, they don't, but I guess they're not, they're not like really meant to hold it anywhere else. But uh, like I said, any vehicle, any turret, and the grunt will do that. And it just looks pretty funny <laughs> when you look at it. Um, especially from like certain angles, like I don't even know like how they can hold that on their head. It must be like pretty heavy actually. Uh, but anyways, moving right along for number eight, there's a pelican here in the hangar that you're supposed to clear, uh, and then once you clear all the enemies, the pelican will come out and then fly away, uh, evacuating like marines and stuff from the area. However, the pilot in the pelican is actually killable, and while the pelican is docked in that section, you can actually like phase through it. As in, when you jump up there, you can actually like clip right through the pelican. It's actually not solid. So while you clip right through, you actually have a chance to uh, kill the pilot inside. Which is what we're going to do right now with a very brief tutorial here. So what you want to do is throw down like a, a drop shield there and then see you could jump right through the pelican and you could briefly see the pilot inside. So if you're doing this solo, you just got to keep jumping through it and hope you can uh, shoot the pilot. Uh, it's kind of tricky though because you have like a very small window to do it But the easiest way to do it is with a teammate Have your uh, partner jump on your head uh, While you're while you're standing on the drop shield and then move forward a little bit just so your uh, Your partner can see inside of the pelican and once inside they can just keep shooting the pilot until the pilot dies And once he dies he will fall through the pelican and land on the ground so, what's so special about killing the pilot? I mean, yeah, that, that's one thing you probably never noticed you could do, but it's actually more to this. So, once you've killed the pilot, uh, you can clear out all the enemies in the room now to finish this part of the mission. Uh, so, once you've finished this part of the mission, the, you know, as expected, the pelican will still come out. And when it gets dropped, normally it's supposed to uh, hover and fly away outside, but without the pilot, when it drops, it just <laughs> falls through the ground. And that's it. Now, if you stand under it while it drops, you can have a little bit of fun with it. And it'll, depending on where you stand, it'll launch you really far out of the map. Like so. Uh, and it still falls on the ground. But yeah, it's a little fun thing you could do there with this little trick. Now, for number nine. On the Mission to Covenant during the intro cutscene, there's two pelicans flying towards the first tower about to drop you off. Uh, you as in Master Chief. And... You'll notice that the two warthogs on both pelicans are actually troop transport warthogs. Which, first of all, when they drop down, if you look closely over there, they're not blown up. You know, when they hit the ground, they're actually fine. Uh, you know, they're really in pristine condition, except for, aside from, like, kicking up some dirt off the ground. But in the cutscene, they are, you know, not destroyed. But, once we land and we uh, start the mission and, and get into gameplay, if we head right for the warthogs, and once we get over there, we will see that the Warthogs, well, two things. A, they are now blown up for no reason. They were in pristine condition when they hit the ground earlier, but now they are all blown up. But the thing that you also probably never noticed is that uh, while they were on the Pelicans, they were true transport Warthogs. But now, after they're blown up, 
they magically turned into regular turret warthogs, chain gun warthogs. So it's uh, just a little weird thing there. All right, four, number 10. This one I have also covered in a previous video before, but it's actually like such a really cool thing that I wanted to make sure that uh, people who haven't seen the video have also seen this as well. Uh, so at the third tower of the covenant, there are usually three banshees that spawn out here. Uh, sometimes banshees from the second tower will mix in with this group, but there are definitely three unique banshees here. If you manage to hijack these banshees and kick the brute out of the banshees without killing the brutes, then you will see that the brutes in these banshees, these three banshees, they are actually holding uh, UNSC battle rifles. This is something that you would normally never see because usually you blow up all the banshees over water. So when they die, they fall straight down and you know you basically never be able to notice it. Uh, but on the rare occasion that you do decide to board the banshee and keep the brute alive, they will uh, have battle rifles. Uh, which is uh, pretty uh, pretty cool and like I said it's something that most people probably would never have noticed before if they didn't do this specifically. Likewise on number 11 which I also showed recently but I wanted to show again uh, on the turrets of a lot of these phantoms, a couple phantoms throughout the game, the grunts on the turrets they actually have spikers as their weapons which normally grunts do not have spikers but you know, it's, a, it's a really cool thing and I just also wanted to show this to you guys again, but basically, grunts in Halo 3, typically they only use like plasma pistols or needlers, or sometimes they're using heavy weapons, they'll use like fuel rod cannons, but there's really no reason grunts would use spikers, unless they're like banished grunts from Halo Wars too, but banished didn't exist back then, uh, at least, and I don't even think in lore they, they existed back then either, but still, it's, it's kind of a cool thing, and you know, even though it could be like unintentional, like a mistake on Bungie's part, or even like an easter egg, it could almost be like um, a tie-in to the Banished in Halo Wars 2. In a way, unintentionally. Uh, but yeah, so two phantoms that we know of in Halo 3 have these spiker grunts. One at the first area of uh, the Mission to Storm, and another one at this area on the Ark. And there are a total of four, four grunts, basically, that you can uh, see with spikers. And the way they use spikers, like, it's like they're not meant to use spikers. It, it's just, it looks like their arms are going to fly off. They keep firing it. Uh, but anyways, for number 12, the final thing I'll be showing you guys for today is the hole in Johnson's chest. So, on the last level of Halo, spoiler alert, um, Johnson gets shot by Guilty Spark and killed. Uh, basically, gets zapped by Guilty Spark's beam. And then, you know, later when Chief goes to see uh, how Johnson is, obviously Johnson is dying. But if you look closely, it's hard to see from this angle, but you can kind of see a little bit of, like, damage on his chest. Um, but you can't really tell. And, you know, because his hand is blocking it and the camera angle is all weird, you never see, like, his whole chest. But, if we switch back to gameplay in a second, and we take a look at his body, most people usually uh, during the gameplay section where they're supposed to kill Guilty Spark, they just go straight for Johnson, grab the laser, and then go kill Guilty Spark. But, if we stop for a minute, and take a closer look at Johnson's chest, like if we zoom in and look really closely, you can notice the attention to detail that Bungie actually put to Johnson's injury. As in, they actually did put an injury on him. There's literally a huge hole in his chest, where Guilty Spark zapped him. And, this is the only time this version of Johnson is used. They actually made like an entire model for Johnson that has a hole in a chest for when Guilty Spark zapped him. Even though in most cases, people never would have like looked that closely to Johnson's chest. Uh, and they probably, Bungie probably would have gone away with saving some resources and not uh, making that specific model. But they actually put that, you know, great care into the attention to detail for Johnson and added that hole in the chest. So, bravo to Bungie there. You know, because I don't think people would have noticed either way whether it was there or not. But yeah, so hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and found these things to be uh, interesting. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like. Uh, you know, leave your thoughts in the comments. Just anything else that I missed that you think uh, that people might not have noticed, feel free to let me know in the comments. Or you know, anything else you need to check out, just let me know. And I'll definitely do my best to look into it. But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.